you go out on a date or you go out on a couple's thing or something like that, and your girl is recklessly yapping at another man, talking at him, and then somehow... Or being, or not even just yapping, but just being rude. Just being yeah, rude to staff, rude aggressive to people, uh, just spouting off nonsense, insulting people, being passive-aggressive. You're willing to put up with that with the possibility of some degree of satisfaction or some degree of happiness. And that's, and look, don't get me wrong. It's, this is the thing which you get, where you get all these other dudes fresh and fit and Kevin, they're bitching about women, this, that, and the other. But you you shouldn't be bitching. You, you should you, not be tolerated. You, Just move on. You got this puppy and you let him run rampant. Yeah. Yo, what's up, Square Pit Brigade? On this episode, uh, this is just a family, and we discuss relationships and obligations, stem cells in your dick, talking to, talking about regrets and Black Phillips show, but how it's not a woman's fault if she if you're a simp. That's get right. your shit together. This is a goodie. That's right. Um, we do we do a lot of cool stuff on this one. Uh, we also keep the show going over at Patreon. Uh, where we do all our bonus content. If you love what we do on the main show, check out patreon.com slash manschool202. That's where we do all the bonus content, like this week's show, where we uh, continue talking about uh, Corey Holcomb, uh, Russell Simmons, that situation, and you know just all the different aspects of how not to be a simp. And plus, we are also uploading all the archived episodes of Beige Phillips, so our show starting from episode one, we're up to 100 right now. We're loading up almost on a daily basis. It's Available only on the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Manschool202. And if you want a relationship consultation from me, you can email me at advicefromharry at gmail.com. Yeah. DanteNero.com. Click on consult. You know how to get me. Let's get into it. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Uh, first and foremost, Pop. Yo, what up, Pop? What you doing, Harry? You chilling? Yeah, bud. You That's, good? You what good? Up, nice, all right. Cel- you celebrating a little birthday thing. That's doing right. Your- doing what it do, being a righteous, incredible taking, man. Taking care of my lady, which means... Uh, uh, a four-day birthday festival. You know how this shit is. They you know love how it good. Means it'll be nothing in it for you. <laughs> oh no, not at all. Not at all. It's a nightmare to put her on every year. It it provides. Every year she asks me what I want for my birthday. I tell her. First I say I don't want anything because I don't give a shit. Right. Yeah. But then that that receives a sour. Like come on, let's do something. I said, how about this? How about for my birthday? We don't have to do your birthday next year. <laughs> and then she'll go, oh, I don't want that. I go, all right, then just a hat. Just give me a hat. Give me a hat. He goes, what kind of hat? I don't give a fuck. Whatever hat. It doesn't matter. This is the job. This is the job, okay. man. It's the job. You got to. It's the job. There's no vacation days. No vacation days. In pimping. <laughs> Not even on your birthday. You're like, oh, great. I got to come up with something. Now that's I got to come up with something for me to do. That. That's it. Uh. No. But it's that's part of the, that's part of uh, loving part your of, lady. That's it. That's the, the responsibility. Hustle. That's it's it's no different than it's all a responsibility. Raising a kid, having a girl, having a job. It's all responsibilities as a man. No days off. No days off. And you know what? That's life. That's, that's right. what people say. Uh, I mean, we had a good time on Monday. I'm making. I am. I am very tired. Of recording in the morning, so I am making it sound like. It was fucking drudgery. We have a good time because I know how to have a good time, but it's work. Yeah, you- it's work is my point, fellas. So if you ever feel like, what the fuck? Because I hate when, you know, everyone's got to pretend like this is the reality of it. This is the reality of like, yeah. All right. It's work. You got to yeah. plan it. You got to make sure it's good. You see the look on her face. She's happy when you get the gifts because they're thoughtful gifts. You're like, yeah, you're damn right. You should be crying. You're damn right. You should be you should crying. Be, in fact, why aren't you crying more, bitch? Yeah, What's wrong with you? You should be crying. That's a thoughtful gift. I celebrate. I celebrate a good gift the way you celebrate like a, a street basketball dunk. Where I'm just uh, like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> you run around. Oh, you run around. just run around the like you did it more like a soccer goal. That sounds more like a soccer goal. I'm just high fiving people. Go! Pelota, 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 pelota. I killed that shit. 
Yeah. I don't know how to kill it. Here's a, t- a tip for the guy, since we're just free, free, free balling out here. I don't really like that phrase. I'm free balling. Free style. Yeah. <laughs> it means we don't have no pants on. That's what free balling means. <laughs> free balling means you, you do a podcast with no with no pants on. Oh, that then I always free ball. That's like the Jerry, of like Zoom. Tobin, like the guy on CNN. Jeffrey you remember? Tobin? Yeah, Jeffrey Tobin just was in there jacking off, jacking off during CNN. They talking about. World War Three possibility. He just jacking yeah, off somehow. Yeah, yeah. He's turned on by World War Three, jacking off. He's that's like uh, Putin. I'm I'm turned on. That's that's how guys. When it's your job, you don't care whatever it is, no matter how serious it is. So there had to be jacking somebody off. during World War Two who Crimea. just got just got out of a meeting with Hitler. Is like, all right. Anyway, like, before I get back, I have a. They invaded break. Crimea. And my dick is hard as hell. <laughs> what are we gonna about? What are we gonna do about the Ukraine? What are we gonna do about this hard on? That's what I want to know. Listen, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do with this Ukraine. Soon as I turn this camera off, you watch and see. Oops, I didn't turn it off, and now yeah. I'm splooging on. Now I'm, I'm fired. Splooging on the Crimea map. So it is. Well, I was supposed to hold on. Let me give this tip before I forget for the fellas out there. You want to be an excellent gift giver? I'm a great gift giver, and I'll tell you why. Throughout, because because you just gotta listen, right? You gotta listen. Yeah. I have a terrible memory. Uh, in my phone, I use the notes app. Whenever she mentions something that she likes, put a little if, note. If it's in January, I make a list all yeah, year make long. Make all the things so she don't even know. She because half the time she's just talking, just a yapping, just yapping. I don't remember. I don't like orange marmalade. I do like I do like strawberry preserves. And you're like, <laughs> write it down. You start a note. You start a note. The name I of the do. note is this bitch. Oh boy, you <laughs> don't have to do it that way. But if you want to, I guess. I mean, how how else you. how else you gonna find a note? I put in gifts. Uh, that's a lot more helpful because I think all your notes would have this bitch. <laughs> You'd have like seventy five <laughs> notes. To say this bitch, and then you don't even know who. Now you got to go through a mystery. Nah, you go pound sign one, pound sign two. <laughs> this bitch, pound sign three. That's how you know. That's See? how you separate them? Listen, fuck Dewey Decimal System, bro. Oh, bro. I'm telling you, it's the new shit. So this uh, way, come, come her birthday eight months later, you open the app. Come Christmas, you just go, oh, that's right. Bam, bam. And I do that for all my family too. Just, right. you know, bam, that's it. Just, yeah. they tell you because, yeah, just listen throughout the year. But that takes foresight, planning. Don't get you gotta caught. Gotta have foresight. That's it. Foresight. But, you know, a, a, a plan, a plan well planned is a plan, blah, 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 blah. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know What's, that one, but I'll look it up. You don't know up. that? No, gotta I'll look it up. Out. It's a, it's a well planned, plan something. Let me look up the quote on well planned. <laughs> well planned. You didn't clearly. You didn't plan out this quote. No, no, no I didn't. I did. I should have planned it. You know what? I also should have put it in my phone under this nigga. <laughs> oh boy! Again, a lot of notes. <laughs> my shit is obscure. My my labeling is a, what is it? A a, a a plan well planned is a something something. Come I on, I, I, the first quote I see it takes as much energy to wish as it does to plan. That is not, not that true is. at all. That is not it. If the no. uh, a plan well planned, no, <clears throat> see, I've never heard. It. Now I gotta find that. Yeah, it's all over the place here. I'm gonna find uh, it's it's something like that. What's a, a quote? What is it? An old wives' tale? If you would call it a wives' tale. I don't anyway. know if it's a wives' tale. Um, well planned. Not nothing's popping up, but I gotta find it another time here. Let's get. We yeah, can't, whatever. We it doesn't can't both matter. be Googling, unfortunately, yeah. here uh, on the show. So, Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm doing what's great. What's up, I guess yo? That's the what's up? What's up? I'm in a good mood because I'm rested. And usually we do the show later, and I'm tired. Uh, so I'm 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 kind of doing been doing a lot of consultations. But I came across. Uh, well, well, let me just let me let me give you the background. So everybody keeps sending me messages. I hope you feel better. I hope you feel stem cells is working out, but it's it's, it's definitely a process. I am going from waves of pain to no pain because uh, apparently with the stem cells, uh, you end up, you you get inflammation and the inflammation triggers the, uh, you know, it triggers the, what you call it, 
the 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 response, the autoimmune response, and the healing response. And so the, your those stem cells go, andale, andale, andale. I'm, I mean, I'm just I'm just well, saying you that got them done in Mexico. I so did get them in Tijuana. That. That's why. That's, that's why you're using that voice. <laughs> By Doctor Speedy Gonzalez, is that yeah, what happened? I got we got him. I got him from the umbilical cords of of uh, taco chefs, young oh. a, a young, beautiful taco chef with long black hair, and she's like forever, Holmes. Oh boy. So, <laughs> so so these stem uh, cells they react. You get the they stem react cells. To the, the inflammation they go to the, but then they start building a like a structure or like a gummy cell structure. And that's how it builds the, it builds the, uh, the cartilage in your knees and spine and stuff like that. If, uh, so, so if what are you feeling know, now? Like, uh, you a I'm a little achy a little? right now. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm fine now. So, I mean, a little bit of achy in the center of my knee, the left knee doesn't hurt at all. My back has not been hurting and I can move, I can lift my shoulder above my head. So, um, my arm above my shoulder. So, I mean, it's a gradual thing, but this process is going to go, uh, it's going to go, go on for like a year. Uh, fun fact. I don't know if I told you, did I tell you this? They had an old dude down there with me that put, uh, 10 million stem cells in his dick. Jesus. 10 million in his dick. In First his of dick. all, I didn't know you could put, uh, I, I mean, how would you know? I, how, yeah, how, I, I, how, I how would we know? I haven't needed that thus far, but it's nice to know. I guess that'll be an option. We'll all be older someday. Three year old dude put 10 million stem cells in his dick, and his 61 year old wife was excited. Oh, boy. That, yeah, that she old, was there with him. Oh, yeah. She got her knee done. Yeah. He got his dick. He, well, he got his lower back done, and, he, and, his, and his lower back, and he got his dick done. Uh, based on so, nothing, I'm gonna guess fake tits. She's got fake tits. Uh, yeah, she did have fake yeah, tits. Yeah, kind of thank thing. you. All right, I, I know brown. the couple already. Not his first wife. Uh, uh, actually, was his first wife. Really? Well, congrats. Yeah, yeah. Then. Shit. yeah he, All right. He, uh, yeah, dude. What I like, real... what I like about this is I didn't know you could get uh, stem cells in your dick, but I'm betting you 10 million is the maximum they do. I bet you he's like, they're like, how many stem oh, cells yeah, you no, want in your nobody dick? Nobody goes, goes all of them. <laughs> Nobody goes, uh, you, uh, you know what? Let me get a hundred thousand. Nobody says that. Everybody goes, yo, how much can I supposed to make your dick bigger, harder, and uh bigger erections? And uh fun fact, uh very smooth, smooth like uh chrome. It's a your the, dick, your dick is like, supposed to be smooth. Yeah, like chrome, you can you can shave in the head of your dick. Mm. <laughs> okay. Saying. You can't do that. God, but I'm, scared it's to get old. I'm so scared to get old now. <laughs> it, you're really making it sound like a nightmare. You got to have these Frankenstein procedures on your yeah. dick. Like I get it. I'm not judging. I understand. I believe in. Kobe cells, did but... it. Kobe did it in the fucking. Yeah, uh... Not in his dick. I understand that. No, it he did it in the, uh, let me tell you something. Come on, bro. Let's be honest. If they're shooting your Achilles heel and you go, yo, who doesn't? Who has not had that kind? Yo, what about if you put that in my dick? And then the, the doctor goes, well, I mean, you, we could do that. And I'm such and such. Well, I mean, if you got a little left in the syringe, pop, top me off. Yeah. I don't want to waste it. I mean, if you're just going to throw, if you're going to throw the stem cells in the wastebasket, you know, I don't want to. So well, I'm not going, trying no, to be No, we're all going to use it on your kid. Well, then you got another, you got another bag you could just drop in the old Johnson. Huh? So just. Just empty it out. I just have an image of like Star Trek or whatever. He's like, I'm giving it all I can. See, I'm I'm so broken, right? I didn't I didn't put no stem cells. But I don't know. When I go back, I might I might, I might listen. Like, what do they you, have to actually inject it? Yeah, man. They gotta put you under and shoot it in your oh, dick. Shit. I'm not whatever, sure if they're under. It. Yeah, they put you under and then bongity bong bong. You know what I mean? You, just, you don't wait you wake up, it was a needle. You go, ow, why does my fucking Balls my hurt. Dick hurt. My dick and balls hurt. <laughs> Jesus. But, but then again, you know, listen, this weekend I was uh, I was trying, I was using a weed whacker and it was an old one with an extension cord and I whipped my balls with the weed whacker. Oh, nice. With the, nice. Uh, with the extension cord. So. Oh, with the extension Okay, I thought yeah, I was like, whacker. Because no, you whipped it with the, with the actual fishing I, well, line, I bro. Be here. No, I'd be in Mexico trying to get stem cells <laughs> to repair stem cells in your balls right But if now. that shit hurts then, I mean, what's the difference? We all hurt our balls eventually. Here's a funny thing. Even when I'm down there, right? So I'm with um. So 
he's a very old and kind of withered man, but he was like, it was a dude who uh, had, gra- like, for all his years, he hauled granite. Like, he used to do kitchens, and he used to sell granite for kitchen tops. Granite and marble kitchens to pick up big, and that's how he fucked up his back, picking up slabs of granite, right? Um, where me, I fucked up my back picking up a bitch named Granite. So, <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. She, she on on on. Uh, she was from uh, uh, Patchen Avenue, Granite. Jesus, was, you and she, and uh, like all the people from the '96 <laughs> powerlifting Olympic team, just yeah, getting your stem was, cells for different reasons. She named herself Granite, so Granite, but that, to make it exotic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with an accent over the e. So picking up big bitches during stripping, uh, her name was Granite. So, um, but yeah, so very um, kind of traditional, uh, kind of traditional couple. You know, they've been married, kids, or whatever. And then he retired and fuck, you know, his back was trash. He can't walk, you know, having our problems walking. Married this girl. She was much younger. Than her. I think she's like 20, almost 15 years younger. Than her. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm. And, uh, you know, they're still together. And so she was like, you know, everybody was a little nervous about, I, I have to be honest, man. I was a little, uh, I was a little, I, I feel like I was a little racist about Tijuana. You know what I mean? When I thought of Tijuana, I thought there uh-huh. was going to be a Mexican dude sitting in front of the hospital with a sombrero and machine gun bullets just cross. Just a bandolier of, of, band- of, uh, of, mach- of bullets? And a poncho. Think? Poncho and a bandolier bullets, oh, boy. and then I was gonna walk in. He was gonna say, "We don't need no stinking badges." <laughs> oh, so, but I, I got there. It was a beachfront uh, clinic overlooking the water, and there was a Seven Eleven next to it. So yeah, they have 7-11. them there. They have them there for the tourists. I mean, they don't go in there, but they have them. I stayed in the fucking no, no. Everybody was in there, man. Yeah. Like it was, yeah. It was. Uh, it was. Uh, I, I stayed at the Hilton. The you also T- really you also learn when you go over there to Mexico. I've vis- I've been there a couple times, and you also learn amongst the many reasons to hate this place that we call yeah. home. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The food is better over there. Even their junk food is healthier than our junk food. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they Mexico is the only place I didn't have diarrhea. I'm gonna be honest yeah. with you. That's yeah, how man. bad our chem- the yeah, chemical. The I mean, literally, the chemicals they're pumping in our food is like bonkers and you realize the difference when you go over there and they don't had, they don't allow that shit over there the i had nonsense. a tomahawk steak which cost me like uh it was like 200 uh pesos or 200 pesos or i forget what it is but i'd come down to about 70 bucks it was like 60 bucks tomahawk steak big ass 20 Jesus. maybe a 22 to between 22 and 30 ounces of Steak was really food was amazing. Um, the Hilton was crazy, and the strip club, what? Oh my god, strip club was crazy. Strip club, it was a Tuesday, and there was about 700 women in the fucking strip club. Crazy, 700 women dancing, or just yes, just, between what? five and 700 women. How many Tuesday. dudes were in the, the strip club? Which maybe strip, like what? 300. What size strip club is this? It's huge. It was like Jesus. a fucking airport, my man. It wasn't it was like in LaGuardia. an Aztec <laughs> temple, was it? You didn't go to the, yeah, it was, the, the it titty was, twister. It's like LaGuardia Airport. They oh, had Jesus. A, yeah, man. I was waiting for Selma Hayek to come out with a snake wrapped around and put her foot in my mouth. So, But that didn't happen. But there was some smokers in there, my man. Smokers. This was a Tuesday night. I, I met a cartel dude. Oh, uh, 500 pound cartel dude that was just tossing money around and shit so it was cool yeah, only are me you sure I'll cartel hanging. doesn't mean ice cream over there it might be an ice cream guy nah the way this dude pounds. was throwing that money around B he was he was definitely connecting the girls knew who he was so they was like on him it was on him hot it was hot for him and all of that giant t-shirt he had a giant t-shirt and kind of sweats I don't know what it was like tent sweats and shit, but that motherfucker was tossing money around. But good time. So I'm I'm doing fine. Just want to say that I'm doing fine. I want to get into the stuff. But I was I was thinking about the whole old dude with the, the, the main stem cells in his dick. 
Yeah. And uh, I'm sure you have been. I'm not going to I'm not going to not think about that or unsee that nightmare oh, yeah. for a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah. God um, bless him. So you're thinking about the dude with the stem cells in his dick. Like, so what's interesting is like, so I'm um, anyway, his wife had to go like they would, you know, they had to split up because they were doing different procedures. And his wife had got ended up in a van with me going to get uh i heard she had 10 million stem cells put into her jaw is that is that a true well let me prepare tell you for the dick working again <laughs> yeah I mean, and then also on just the front of her knees the, the jaw hinge just the jaw hinge and the <laughs> and and the, the the knee uh what do you call it the knee fucking the plate patella the, the patella, patella yeah. bone yeah the front of yeah. the knee just the front of the knee and the her the back of her throat, her uvula had yeah, to be they, reinforced. They reinforced that, right? So, uh, but she was, uh, you know, I was talking to her and she was telling me how he got how he got fucked up and whatever. Sure, but he, she was like, I was really worried about Tijuana when you think about Tijuana. And then I, she was like, I saw you get in the van with me, and I was like, I'm okay, I'm okay, uh -huh. I'm okay. And so it was interesting that you know that you know that but I mean, and then, and this woman was like. Uh, she's Italian, and the dude was like from Portugal, right? And uh, she's Italian, Italian or American, Italian, she's Italian American. Okay, from Long Island, bro. Oh boy, from Long Island, and she was like, "Oh, I feel, I feel, I was worried of traveling," and then I was like, "Oh, oh it's, you're in the van, and I'm, I feel good." And so it's interesting. I thought it was interesting how she felt safe with me. They, like, there was a certain. Like she didn't know me from anything, but just knowing that I was there, knowing, I mean, I, I, I think, and it's, it's interesting how women get that. They get that feeling about safety. Um, simply when you, um, you know, simply when you present yourself in that way, they could just tell. And, and this is what I talk about the empathy and the, and the subtext. So when we talk about the subtext of women picking up on the, uh, on the subtleties of of your body language and you and but I mean they're super sensitive to it. They can they can read it in every set. I mean this, this which was way past her prime and and you know hadn't been in the game in a while. But she knew she knew that I wouldn't let no I wouldn't let her get kidnapped by some bandoleros. I just I she could just tell. I don't think they do that like that anymore. They don't come back on horseback. But she thought so. Band. She was yeah. from Long she was from Long Island. So she was like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. and they would snatch her and throw her over the horse and <laughs> but no, none of that. And run around the horse and shoot their pistol in the air, their pistolas. Gringos, no. pizza, gringos. So they didn't do nothing. But I think she was afraid of that. And then when I got in the, I got in the van, she felt she felt safe. And it's just something that you think of. It made me think, man, man, like it's so, you know, the stuff that we talk about, the, the principles and the stuff that we talk about is just so innate, so instinctual. And and it just there's no denying it. And uh, moreover than not, again and again and again, and we see all these dudes who are perpetuating this stuff that we you know that patrice and i were talking about in 2006 and you and i've been talking about this shit since 2010 2012, yeah, 2011 2012. 12 whatever and uh and they're and they're so far behind because they they picked up on the stuff that we were talking about so long ago i mean i get so many young dudes it's like oh i know you from from black philip and i'm like man is this is that's not good don't get me wrong if you got nothing, right? The Black Philip is better than nothing. Yeah, it gives sure. you a foundation, yeah. gives you a recognition of what the what the damn is social dynamics between between men and women are and, and so on and so forth. Um but man, it's 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 I I think about some of the stuff that I was talking on listening to the older episodes, and I'm like, oof, man, I, I, I wish I I, I wish say, I when you say woof, like you're are you talking about that it's cringeworthy or that you're going, ah, that's the wrong info? Or both. Uh, both sometimes. Both sometimes. I mean, it was definitely a different time. Um, but one of the things that I think that uh, any of the guys who who consult with me and guys who have who have uh, you know have decided because I, I I mean I get it. You know, people listen to the podcast, and I think this the podcast reinforces everything. But if you really want to make the change, you yeah. I mean, it's just reasonable that you need a coach. 
you, 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 I mean, nobody makes it to the Olympics without a coach. Everybody has a coach and everybody, everybody's, you know, that where you're checking in with somebody. I mean, I, I, I saw this uh, documentary on, on Usain Bolt and uh, man, his coach was just so just every detail of his form. He was watching you doing this, you're doing that, you're leaning on the right hand side. We got to stretch this hamstring a little more. It's just it's just so much more beneficial when you have somebody watching over you so that you, when you when it does go left or you do make mistakes, you, um, you know, continue to make the mistake because there's nothing worth them. Pay attention, Harry. I'm listening. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm teasing you. Oh, just <laughs> you're picking your fingers. I was like, "What the fuck are you looking at?" Um, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, bud. I'm listening. I'm listening. Um, that you you need a you don't want to get into a situation where you're um without you a pick coach. Up a, yeah, the you pick up a habit is, I think and then it becomes are, habitual. I think people have coaches. The problem is they're picking the wrong coaches. That's where I look at it because I think people yeah. are glomming on to. You know, we've mentioned the names before, Andrew Tate and, and you know, Kevin Samuels. And and Kevin God rest his so. Yeah, God rest uh, his, no name about no that other, name. Yeah, Our yeah. Lord and Savior, Kevin Samuels. The, the problem is they are, there are elements of those guys. And even Kevin Samuels, who has elements of something that's really great. The problem is that with the coaching, they're picking the wrong coaches and they don't have the full direction. There's, but there's just not many people out there who know what they're talking about, you know, who really – understand the whole the whole aspect of it and that it's not anger the problem is a lot of the coaching involves anger right now and it's just it's just uh you have a right to be angry and that's it and there's nothing there's no resolution or actually problem solving skills it's just being angry and uh when they and it's talking about it you're like you're commentating it's like you're sitting up in 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 the commentator's box and you're just commentating on, but you're not saying what needs to be done or how that has to be changed. And and I, you know, one of the things that we we used to say back in the days, which I still, a woman is a direct reflection of the man that she's sleeping with. Um, she so what you are presenting is they're getting cues from that. Like so, there's like women, you know, and you, you'll find this. And I, I know this is a little controversial because people go, oh, you're talking about women, but fuck you. I'm talking about women. This is my yeah. fan base. And I mean, and if a woman called me up and she had a consultation with me, I would absolutely teach the other side of it. But here's yeah. what you got. And women also, are, let's not act like there's not podcasts out there where women are just talking trash about how, and dudes, how trash and men or what they don't like about men. What do you, don't, what do you bring to the table? You, you, you motherfuckers, I got blah, 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 whatever, whatever. So, but here's here's the thing. Uh, there is a direct reflection. Um, a woman, uh, women tend to like. You can tell this by the way women ha- pick their friends. Like women will have different f- friends for different things. They will have friends that they go shopping with, same friends that they club with, friends with they fucking skis and hoe out to. Mom friends, friends, that, friends with kids, yeah, right. Friends with kids. Friends, you know, so they so they have different groups. All I got is you, motherfucker. That's Just it. you. That's and, it. And, and you take what I whatever I bring to the table. That's I'm like, all right. So if it ain't yeah. You know what I'm saying? You no, that's the you have friends, you have loyalty to just dudes who are your loyal who are to loyal. and they don't give you everything you want all the time. No, no. It's but just, we don't I, go we don't go we don't have groups of people that we the specificity sure specificity of specificity. Of, specificity yeah. of groups of people that um that are this is for this and that's are for convenient that. yeah. for whatever you feel like being at the moment. Yeah. 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 Um. So it's just it's, it's it's different. It's like if you're my friend, you're my friend, and then I accept you as it is. And if it's something that you don't have the the the, the particular aptitude for, it, then it's just that's just it. I don't bring another one for God. I tell you, there was there was two uh, two white dudes. It was a Jewish dude and an Italian dude, and they kept coming to the comedy club to see me. And they were like, yeah, because you know, like the first time they come, they had a good time, and I was uh. I was fucking with them and snapping with snapping on them on stage. And then they just kept coming back. And and I was like, you motherfuckers, I'm not making friends at 50. Like, I, what the fuck? I look, I'm not trying to be your friend, dog. Yo. I don't get out of here. Beat it. You know, this is creepy. Like, get the fuck out of here. 
do I look like making a friend at 50? You reach now, the point. I mean, I'm not yeah. saying I wouldn't make a friend at 50, but it w- I wouldn't be looking for a friend. If- it would be somebody who I, because of my life, took me in a particular place. And then through a period of time, because I was around them, I was like, oh, I like this motherfucker. And, and then, you know, the friendship would grab. But I, I'm not. Hey, let's hang out. Yeah. Let's exchange numbers. Beat it, weirdo. You know what I mean? <laughs> what are you, stupid? <laughs> You're a grown man. You're not allowed friends. Um, <laughs> All right, we got off track here. Holy yeah, shit! Well, wait, wait, you know, you're saying friends, but we we're talking about life coaches. Right, but there's a malleability that women have, and yeah. because there's a malleability, right? That same malleability it, it occurs when they're with a guy. So if you they get a guy who's not uh, who's not taking no shit, or a guy who's very clear about what his boundaries are, all of a sudden. They're not they're not overstepping those boundaries. It either it either that it's either that or go bust. Now, here's a, a dude that um, Corey Holcomb, Corey Holcomb, one of the funniest dudes in the game. man. I really Hilarious. enjoy his comedy. Um, but Corey has a pretty, you know, it's kind of built his own space, not necessarily relationship stuff. But Corey, uh, Corey is a is a. Corey is a dirtbag. I mean, he's a dirt, but he's he's definitely self-professed, also self-professed, self-professed dirtbag. Dirt but bag, also yeah. that come Corey, that's a direct quote from Corey Holcomb. Yeah, I'm a Corey dirt Holcomb bag. is a dirtbag. <laughs> dash Corey Holcomb. <laughs> Corey Holcomb uh, authorized this this yeah. commercial. You know, um, uh, Corey but, Holcomb is a dirty piece of shit. I'm Corey <laughs> Holcomb, and I approve this message. Right, but Corey is an honest dude. Yeah. He yeah. is an honest dude. He is honest about his limitations. He's honest about what he has observed through time. And because he's he's growing older and he's so more mature and because he's got money, he's got there's a certain breadth of relaxation that he has about money. Um, he is able to sit back and look at some stuff that I think is and say things that are just obvious because he's not emotionally attached to what whatever is going on and it, and he's not triggered and so he's dropping some science is there any way we could bring that that clip yeah, up let me I try to pull two it up clips. Here. but um it, it's an interesting so I'm, I'm let me give you a backdrop um which one are we doing first uh the i think we should do the britney reiner one okay do the britney reiner and the britney britney reiner is the one um basically what he's talking about simps and these dudes who there's dudes who are literally, you know, good, what we would consider good guys, but allow their women to to just recklessly say and do whatever the heck they want to do. And what happens and then they want you to do they want you to they, and these guys want you to let their girl because they don't have no control over their girl. They want you to let her be disrespectful or just to scorch the earth because they can uh, because they can't check her. Um, they're not happy and they want everybody else. To, All right. Can we get this? Yeah. Blow let's that up here. Well, he's talking. Uh, let's see here because he's talking. Wow. Animal. That will well, back say that up. And do- he yeah. gets a pass. Okay, back a little If his further. homie ever say, man, check your girl. Little, yep. Yeah. Uh, All his to get past friends this and family yeah. to treat her like a queen. And that causes breakdown in society. A cake ass nigga will be with a blow that up, huh? Just a, a a bitch you could never be proud of. <laughs> and that motherfucker will look at his home like his homie ain't shit. If his homie ever say, man, check your girl. Yep. Have you ever gone out to dinner with a motherfucking cake ass nigga and his unchecked bitch? <laughs> a cake ass nigga and his unchecked bitch will fuck up the whole restaurant. <laughs> the whole vibe, the whole night. Fuck, D. Just, bitch, who just say and do what the fuck she want to do and don't give a fuck what happened. Now, cut that. Like, Yo, cut man. that down. One second. Now, here's, here's, let me give you the background on this. Here's the situation when you get a woman and she's usually very attractive. This guy is, feels his way. He, this is what I talk about when I talk about it being shoplifting the pussy, where you got a guy who we are doesn't, living- doesn't understand where, uh, he doesn't understand where his 
about what his value is and what value he brings to the table. And because he doesn't understand that, he's just happy to be with this girl. So he's happy to be with her. It, it's literally like if you have a, it, it's literally like if you got a dog, you bought a puppy and you did no training at all. None. Mm. You just, you don't even walk them off. You don't let them heal. You don't put them on a leash. So now he's in your house and he's shitting on the rug, pissing in the corner, ripping up your gaiters, tearing up your furs, gnawing on the furniture. And that and 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 that's in your house. But then what you do is you take that dog to somebody else's house or to the restaurant. And then you have no control over anything. And I, and when I say control, I know that, that that puts a, you know, that there's a stigma to saying that. But dog, what we're talking about is just general respect. Like you go out on a date or you go out on a couple's thing or something like that. And your girl is recklessly yapping at another man, talking at him. And then somehow. Or being, or not even just yapping, but just being rude, just being yeah, rude to staff, rude aggressive to people, uh, just spouting off nonsense, insulting people, being passive aggressive, just out of control. Yeah. I don't even know if it's passive aggressive. It's like aggressive sometimes, aggressive. Yeah. yeah but sometimes both. It's you- either one or both. It's usually both. It's usually yeah. both. There's some, you know, if you're going to be aggressive, you're also going to have some passive aggressive, sarcastic comments. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Um, but it's just a situation. Whatever, a combination, where- a la carte, whatever, any yeah, one, yeah. either one, it's still all volatile and annoying. Whatever. F'd up. Yeah. Let's just say you being F'd up. So he, he, my thing about that is that, but because you don't have the value that you need, because you don't have the value that you should have about yourself, you don't have the self-respect to say that I deserve to be treated better than this because you have put value on uh, on attractiveness in a way that you're not putting value and sex. Yeah. And sex. And, and well, here's the thing. They're connected. Sometimes it's not even sex. Sometimes this, these dudes is not even fucking fair point. They're just hanging out with a bad bitch with the hope that they might get some sex. And you're willing to, to you're literally willing to, um, you know, you're willing to put up with that with the possibility of some degree of satisfaction or some degree of happiness. And that's, and look, don't get me wrong. It's, this is the thing which you get, where you get all these other dudes fresh and fit and Kevin's, they're bitching about women, this, that, and the other, but you, you shouldn't be bitching. You, 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 be Just you, move on. you got this puppy and you let him run rampant. Yeah. And now you got shit stains on your rugs and you're mad at everybody else. You're mad at and the they, dog. And then you're mad. Yeah. You're not mad at the dog. It's the crazy thing. They're oh, never mad the at the girl. Right. They, then everybody else. And then you will. I mean, and we've seen this many times. Comedy clubs. Some chick comes in and she's unruly, disrespectful, uh, obnoxious. And she want to talk to you. Right. And the reason why she talked to you like that is this is your fault. You, all you simps, all you dudes that are allowing these women to, what you're doing is you are reinforcing a behavior that I'm going to have to deal with later. I'm going to say that again. Hmm. You simps are making it difficult for everybody else. You are reinforcing behavior that shouldn't be reinforced. You you don't these they don't even deserve the attention that you're giving them because they're disrespectful. I look, I was in the strip club in Mexico, and this chick comes up, and, oh Bobby, la, 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 and she starts grabbing my dick. I, and I smacked her hand. I'm like, Pop, yo, what you doing? Now, who would do that? Who would stop some chick from for 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 grabbing a dick. He's like, well, she wants to do it. I like it. I'm in. That's not the point. Yeah. The point is the recklessness in which you think you could, I'm accessible to you speaks to the lack of value that I have. I have no value for myself. Yo, slow down. Talk to me. You know, but let me let's see if I even want you around me with your weird ass. Right? It's like, um, 
you, 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 but this is, this is, this is what goes on. It's like, and, well, and don't do get that me wrong. Because it works because other dudes just allow it to happen. Oh yeah. And it's yeah. reinforced every relation because they, you know, they usually come out hot. They come out the gate hot. And so if you're not checking that on the first date, you're not checking. Yeah, it, It's a problem. I, um, you know, I, and this, and, and don't get me wrong. This is what Corey was saying too. He was saying, these guys are not necessarily punks. They can still be rough dudes. Well, that's the irony is that they're rough with other people and they're and rough they with, with like street situations or just genuinely tough, but you can't handle a woman because it's a whole you different can't thing. can't handle a woman. It's, yeah. and, and a lot of this comes from your mama was, that's who your mama was. Your mama was disrespectful. Your mama was overbearing. Your daddy was hiding behind the couch, yelling, and you y'all both hiding behind the couch, and you like y'all are both behind the couch, and you like, Daddy, teach me the ways of manhood and women, and you like, get down. Your mama's coming. Yeah, they what? shooting. <laughs> <laughs> keep quiet. Keep quiet. Why? You know she's Shut home. Up. Shut up. She came, you know, because men want peace and quiet mm. over all else. That's it. That's over it. everything else. But you got to, you, you know, it's it's easy to do it. You have to do it early and often. Early and often. And the minute it gets out of, and it's always out of pocket. Be a, always be willing to leave. That's it. Always be willing to leave. Because that's that's the card that you have. And they don't, the problem is. Men never exercise it. You know, it's yeah, like just having it. atomic bombs that you never use, that yeah. you just never use. Because, yeah. you know, when you leave, like, what does she say after you left? Eh, she'll trash you or whatever. But really, what does she say? Well, why did you leave? Did he beat you? No. No. Did he, Is he an alcoholic? No. No. Did he not pay the rent? No. No. Oh, why did he leave? Well, he said it was because I don't know how to behave, but I don't know. He, you know, because he's all emotional. Right. He's a bitch ass nigga. Yeah. That that's what it is. That's what it, they'll do. It's you, but we, but none of that is going to change when you don't. I don't care what happens if you're not holding people accountable. You're not holding people accountable. Don't expect them to be accountable. How do if you, you find, hold people accountable? You fire them. You got to go. Fire this them. is it. You're out. You I'm done. Them. I'm done. But. With this. Here's the thing. I had a I had this young kid. He, he was saying to me. So I I um, so I was asked. Yeah, and this is funny because I was asked by this by Andrew Andrew Schultz. Yo, how do you, how do you hit a chick up slide in somebody's DMs? And I said, well, a lot of times if I if I if I would, I mean, I don't really do that now. But I mean, if I did, I would. I just send a question mark. I just put a question mark. So they go to see a message, they see a message from me, and they get a question mark. Now, if they're into it, right? By the way, just to throw this out there, this was years ago from Andrew Schultz because yeah. he is oh, now yeah. married. I don't want to I don't want to create problems. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. Schultz. Right, right, right. Yeah, this specify is, that, bro, because I don't want poor Andrew Schultz going, hey man, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. But I mean, let, let's be honest, your ability to leave and have options is what makes your marriage work. Absolutely. Because yeah, if you absolutely. if your woman doesn't think that you have options, she's leaving. Nobody wants somebody who doesn't who doesn't who's not wanted. That doesn't happen. So um some this young kid who who follows the podcast and he and he also, you know, he's a young comic and he goes, Yeah, yo, I tried the uh he goes, I tried that question mark shit. And I, it didn't work. And I asked, Well, uh, let me ask you something. So let let me explain let me explain the personal the the this not even the strategy the dynamics of sending a question mark. What does a question mark mean? Basically, it is a it is a um a it's sort of like going huh what's up, but it has no there's no it's like what yo what's up. But there's no energy behind it. So it's like, I'm checking in on you to see, yo, what's up? But if not, I'm cool. Keep it moving. But if you're not interested, you're not interested. Now, why does it work and why does it not work? If you are not being the best version of yourself, right? Huh? 
is going to go, you know, her response to your huh is going to be like, huh? it's going to be ill, right? If you're not working out, if you're not boxing, if you're not working on yourself, if you're not the best version of yourself, you, you still have to present value. And the way you pre- present value as a man is by taking care of yourself, fulfilling your happiness, making sure that you're successful. That doesn't mean that you got to have a Bugatti. Mm. It, it just means that you got to be, you got to be comfortable with your own skin because you are working towards a level of, like, like I always say, we always pursue perfection, even though that perfection is unattainable. And the reason why perfection is unattainable is because as you move closer to the goal of perfection, the goal moves further away from you. What I mean by that is as you move closer to the goal, the 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 imperfect and the def- deficiencies become more evident. So as you move closer, it's like it's, it's like Swiss cheese. When you step when you look at Swiss cheese from afar, you see these big holes, right? When you move closer to it, you 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 see hole there's little holes and little holes in there. And as you move closer to it and closer to it, each of those holes get big, bigger because they're emphasized because you're emphasizing, you see more of the imperfections. And so there's more work to do. That's why you never achieve perfection. That doesn't mean you don't pursue it. You pursue it. And when you're pursuing it and you're focusing on being the best version you are, somebody else is going to say, A, that you perceive yourself as valuable. And then B, B, that they're going to see value in you. Here's here's the thing. I mean, I've I've said this a thousand times. How does a woman know what you're worth? You tell her. In the course of your so this social interaction, you're telling her everything she needs to know. If you're insecure about you, if you're insecure about your approach, if you're in, in I mean, I, I say, yo, you can't you can't go in the Bentley store with five racks. You 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 you're just gonna be so because uh, you know you don't belong there. You, you 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 if you go in there with five hundred thousand dollars in a duffel bag, and you go yeah, and they go hey, can I help you, sir? Yeah, I need one of these in teal. And he goes, well, we don't have teal, we have blue. Listen, motherfucker, get out my face! You show me another blue car, I punch you in your face. I said teal, motherfucker, find one. When you have the confidence to make the demands for what you want. You can, but you gotta you gotta believe that you deserve it, and you also have to be willing. Part of being deserving it is willing to take the L in the sense of, yeah, I don't. If you're not into this, fine, I will find somebody else, or I will get it somewhere else. Yeah. The problem yeah. is there's a lot of dudes who that's part of believing in yourself. Don't believe they can find anybody else. They think that their work is done. I found somebody who's willing to live with me, my work is done. And if I lose them, then I have to start from scratch and I won't, will I be able to find somebody else? That's also the trapping that keeps dudes involved because you're right, it's not just about sex. It's also a, 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 about just in the confines of a relationship, people just accept, well, this is what it is. Yeah. And and also the thing dudes are most afraid of, like you said, is peace, uh, not having peace. So yeah. when you argue with her, there's no peace there, right? If, you know, if she's acting wild in a club and you go, hey, you should not behave that way. And then she turns it on you and you're like, it's just not worth this fight anymore. It's just not right. worth it because I don't have peace and it takes two days and this and that. And so you just give up. That's but not if you're if, if you're dating is some chick who's a savage, who's just disrespectful and and uh, and unforgiving and 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 selfish and all these things. What you're really saying is, what you're saying is, look, as long as you, as long as it's not too bad, I'll stay, right? As if, as if it ain't going to turn on you. It's going to turn on you too. This is the nature. This is, I I haven't used this analogy in a long time. Mm -hmm. It's like a lot of you dudes are dating rattlesnakes. You want a pet rattlesnake. Now, I'm not saying you can't have a pet rattlesnake. What I'm saying is, in order to have a pet pet rattlesnake, you got to be built for rattlesnake behavior. That means that every time you take your snake out of the cage, 
You got to have long gloves and high boots. You got to have that, that, you know, that metal that stick with that rod stick with the fork with in it. L fork on it. And you yeah. got to have, you got to have a tube so you can stick his head in it. <laughs> so he can't bite you as a, 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 a acrylic tube to stick the motherfucker in. You got to have a sack to tie him in that he can't bite at a, at a, at a fucking uh, 10 gallon, 10 gallon spackle can to put him in that seals and a five pound weight to put on the motherfucker. Now, if you're ready to do that, by all means, who am I to tell you not to take that off? But you can't have a rattlesnake and think that you're going to sit up and Netflix and chill next to a rattlesnake. Go get a bunny rabbit. Go some. Go get something that's manageable. But but also be honest. And this is this is what we go with the, back to the the basics. Ace authenticity. Be honest and know that you're not a guy. Who can handle a, a rattlesnake? You got no boots. You don't have those glasses. When they spit the venom in your face, you don't have none of that. You you got bunny rabbit gear, and you you in the rattlesnake tank. It's not gonna work. You are gonna end up in the hospital. Having an awful bitch is like having a broken fountain pen, and you got a linen suit. It's only a matter of time till you fuck it up. You mm-hmm. gonna get ink on you. We gotta wait. We gotta. Uh, we gotta go to Patreon, right? Shit, I'm running my mouth so much. Uh, we have. Let's see here. Yeah, we're gonna go Patreon and. Uh, let's go to Patreon real quick. Uh, if y'all wanna go, ahead, you go first, Harry. Uh, yeah. If you want a relationship consultation, you could email me at advicefromharry at gmail That's where all the relationship consultations are for my end, and also follow all my social media at Harry Turjanian. Uh, we're about to go over to Patreon, patreon.com slash manschool202. That's where we do all the bonus shows. We're going to play some more Corey Holcomb clips, I think, over there right now. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. also, patreon.com uh, is where we are uploading all the archived episodes of the uh, Beige Phillips show, the OG Manschool202. So starting from episode one, I think I'm loading one every day. We're up to, I believe, at least 100. So there's 100 episodes up there right now, the first right. 100 episodes. And more to and come. More coming. Every uh, every single. Are you week doing them day. chronologically or no? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Why would I? Cool. Why would I? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. You might have had them in different files. I don't know. No, no. Um, I appreciate it, but uh, I, I yeah, I'm doing them literally chronological order, so you can start at episode one. We're up to at least 100, and then you know we're gonna go. We've done uh, almost 600. We're approaching 600 episodes. They will all be up on Patreon if you uh, if you want to go yeah. back into the archives and start from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, echoey. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. There's gonna be some bad audio quality, some good information, but some bad but audio. Bad audio quality as we learn how to do how to do this podcast. Let me quit real quick. I want to um, shout out the new Patreon uh, members: Adnan Tuco, Tyrone Andrews, Terry, Teddy Bass, Moses David Wilson, John Black, Ter- Terrell Rico, Mike Mulkey. Thank y'all, man. Thanks for supporting this, man. You guys are. Really appreciate you supporting us, dog. I mean, it means everything to me that we're able to do this content and that y'all are loving the content and that you feel compelled to say, look, man, uh, uh, these dudes are helping me. I'm going to help them. So I really want to say that real quick. Um, y'all want to don't forget to follow us on check us out on YouTube, uh, the Man School YouTube. Check out Harry's YouTube page, my YouTube page. Um, all of this stuff is important. We're putting out some really great content. Also on Instagram, Man School Instagram and everything else. Uh, and if anybody's here who you find this that this is helpful, if you want to support us, man, that would be great. Go to www.patreon.com slash manschool202. And if you need a consultation, you can go to Harry to get, get Harry at... Advicefromharry at gmail.com. Or you can go to DanteNero.com and click on consult. And um and I I'll be your coach. I'll be your coach. So um that's dope. GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcast. I love y'all, man. See you on the Patreon side. Peace.